Warriors rise. USA to use XRP as a stable coin. We're going to break it down. I want to hear your opinion down below. My name is Coach JV. I am the top health, mindset, and crypto coach in the world. Remember what you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it right here in your hands. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. Now, remember, why do we say that every single day? Because you bring predictive programs since you were a young child and the reality that you're living right now has been shaped and molded until you're willing to break free from that current reality and open up your mind and awareness to the possibilities for you, human being, you will always be entrapped in a just over broke system. So if you want to join our private warrior Academy, the price will be going up at the end of November. We are launching our revamped crypto Academy on November 15th. This thing is unbelievable. So we have our academy we're up and running right now based on feedback. Uh, we've had over 3,500 warriors go through our academy in the last three years. And based on feedback, what we found was is people, you know, we have tons of calls in our academy for crypto. We have health mindset, get your shit together, 120 day challenge. But one of the things that people say, you know, crypto is new, right? So what is it? How do I do it? An example. So we built out a program, DeFi, stable coins, understanding what nodes are, understanding how to use an exchange, what is it, how to do it, and an example. And so we built it out like an education center, and that will be launching on November 15th and continue to evolve on a weekly and monthly basis. Click the link down below in the description. Let's get this party started. All right, here we go, Warriors. They're changing the narrative slowly but surely. Cryptocurrency was a fraud last year, but now, but now your government, your government is talking about getting us on a stable coin. Here's what I think is going to happen. Remember, you don't have to believe a word I say, but here's what's happening. Okay. We're all of a sudden sitting there in 2019. Everything's good to go. And then all of a sudden your life gets flipped upside down in 2020 by the C word. Now, remember in 2019, they raised, they removed the debt ceiling limit for some reason in 2019. Maybe I'm not an economist, so maybe there's a reason why they did that. They got us prepared. They also were doing simulations for, um, for uh, pandemics in 2019, right? To get ready for that type of stuff. And all of a sudden, March 2020, our whole life gets turned upside down, right? We're in lockdowns. Everybody's buying toilet paper. Everybody's pushed home. All businesses are shut down and the printing machine is turned on. More money's been printed since in the last 18 months than in history, right? But last year, cryptocurrency is a fraud. As this is happening, all in 2020, they're moving players all around the cryptocurrency space. We talked about Brian Brooks, left head legal counsel of Coinbase to become the head of the OCC. He allowed banks, federally chartered banks and thrifts to custody cryptocurrency, all while you were buying toilet paper. You had Jay Clayton, who threw out the SEC lawsuit. He left to go consult for a cryptocurrency fund. Bill Hinman, former SEC director, he now works for a cryptocurrency fund. Uh, who else do we got? We got Brian Brooks, who left the OCC, who went over to... Binance, who left Binance already, but we know it'll probably be in another cryptocurrency. Gary Gensler, who left head MIT, a professor for cryptocurrency, who used to be part of the CFTC, became the head of the SEC. So they're all rub rubbing elbows behind the scenes, working to bring in a stable coin as they pack their bags in cryptocurrency and get ready in the decentralized cryptocurrencies so they can all become the richest people in the world, which we're on our way to as well. And they're going to create a stable coin. And what they're going to do is Yesterday, when Jerome Powell announced that they're pulling us off life support and they're going to start tapering, they're going to taper you into the new system. And what they're going to do is they're going to use the narrative. Inflation's going up, supply chain management problems. People aren't going to be able to afford to live. They're not going to be able to afford to pay their rent. They're not going to be able to afford to do anything. And so what they're going to do is we need to get the stable coin out as quick as possible so we can get aid to people as fast as possible and create financial inclusion. Boom. There you go. I'm going to drop the mic. I'll see you guys at the top. All right, let's watch this, uh, how the narrative is changing. And I'll take you through why I think, why I think Ripple XRP is going to back the US dollar in stable coin. You can question me on that, and I would love this. Is we're all guessing, but here's this is my opinion. I'll break it all the way down. Wait till the end. Welcome back. The Biden administration says stable coins could be a viable form of payment for Americans, but they need to be regulated and issued only by banks. Stable coins are digital currencies linked to national currencies like the dollar. The report notes stable coins could quote support fast. They want to do stable coins issued by the banks. Okay, why do you think the SEC lawsuit is out there? 
It's to bring in a new Howey test to be able to recognize what a currency is, what a stable coin is, how to regulate them, what is a security, right? What's a security? What's a currency? How are we going to regulate stable coins? It's all about bringing in new regulation. That's all it is. More efficient and more inclusive payments options. Joining me right now is the former principal deputy solicitor of the Interior in the Trump administration. He's forming a former acting assistant secretary of the Treasury under President George W. Bush as well. Gregory Zerzan is here. Gregory, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Give us your sense of how the digital economy will evolve and will it include stable coins? Uh, thank you so much for having me, Maria. Um, the uh, last episode, you spoke so eloquently about freedom and people wanting freedom. And, you know, what stablecoin is really about is freedom. People don't trust their national currencies anymore because obviously governments around the world have been printing money, um, which is really why Bitcoin was invented. So I think what we've seen with the Biden administration's latest pronouncement and the attempt to take stablecoin and regulate it as though it is a currency is simply an attempt to fight back the urge that people have to get control of their own finances. You just said it right there. It's, you know, they're fighting back because we are becoming sovereign. We are becoming our own banks. So they're going to get involved in what we're involved in and take back control of the system because the sheep, the sheep don't understand. They don't understand they're being predictive program, right? They're going to manipulate us through the news, through the media, through predictive programming, uh, Burger King, all this stuff, right? They're getting you onto digital wallets, warriors. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you make a great point, but I, we're trying to understand where crypto is going overall, stablecoin and some other cryptos like Bitcoin, uh, uh, the ones we're showing on the on the on the screen, Ethereum, Litecoin. The mayor of Miami, Francis Suarez, says he would take his next paycheck in crypto. Suarez treated this. I'm going to take my next paycheck 100 percent in Bitcoin. Problem solved. Mayor Suarez, a big proponent of the cryptocurrency, recently said that he was working on paying city employees in Bitcoin, Gregory. Your thoughts about what this says about crypto? Well, you know, we should have done it this summer when Bitcoin was trading in the 30s because, you know, now it's a lot more uh, expensive. But uh, for the taxpayers, he, uh, you know, I think it, it makes the same point. People have lost faith in governments that continue to print money seemingly without end. And, you know, if you look at we're going to run up a $3 trillion deficit this year. Well, where does that money come from? It's, it's ultimately, you know, printed. And I think folks look to things like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as an alternative means of exchange that maybe is a better play in a you know potentially very inflationary environment okay so there's a narrative right there warriors they know that we know or that a small group of people know that we can be our come our own bank right so we can hedge against it's never been in a position where we could do this where we can hedge against our currencies right we can have our own monetary system so they know that and they know the masses are not here yet. They know the masses are coming. Burger King, PepsiCo, McDonald's are getting everybody predictive programming. And the reason why those corporations are moving towards it, because they know that's where the money's at. Right. So they see that happening slowly but surely. So they're moving very fast to move us into a stable coin to move us closer to the central banks. OK, so now this is how serious the shit's getting worse. So President's Working Group reports on stable coin. This is November 1st. The reason why I wanted to show this, here's your boy, Gary uh, chair gary gensler um and i highlighted this here the pwg report okay highlights a number of recommendations to address these public policy challenges while congress and public evaluate this report we the sec and our sibling agency the cftc will deploy the full protections of the federal securities laws uh commodity exchange act to these products to arrange where applicable right so they're just throwing whatever laws they think it's something that's completely new right so they don't know what the hell they don't know how to regulate this this is what it's all about the sec lawsuit with ripple okay so let's go here so here's the actual report on stable coins okay and i have page five and 22 highlighted here so this is a report on stable coins this is that pwg report which i want to show you guys i'm a nerd i read this stuff this stuff is really cool okay so if i go to page five Let's do our research together, warriors. Go to page five here. All right, so page five, I just want to read you. So transfer and storage of stable coins. So many of the stable coins in circulation are underpinned by public blockchain networks. Potential benefits and drawbacks inherent with any distributed network technology and presents these types of stable coin arrangement, such as transparency provided by a public ledger, and in particular, the process for public blockchains to come to agreement 
over updates to the ledger typically involves the node operators communicating and validating transactions and then agreeing to a new version of the ledger, often referred to as consensus. What does this sound like, Warriors? Compared to a traditional centralized system, certain public uh, blockchain networks are designed to require greater com com computation resources to achieve consensus. What does Ripple solve? This problem, which in turn constrains the network's capacity for transaction through output, maximum number of transactions capable of being processed per second, Ripple solves that, and may be more expensive and energy intensive than traditional payments. Ripple solves that. In contrast to public blockchains, permissioned blockchains do not allow such open and direct access to distributed ledger. Compared to public blockchains, permissioned blockchains may offer more certainty as to who is responsible for monitoring the network and complying with the rules of the network. XRP and Ripple solve every single one of these issues. Let's go to page 22, okay? Make sure when you read these documents, read everything, words, because you'll find little cues and clues everywhere, right? And we're all, uh, you know, don't believe a word I say. I don't know if this is right. I'm just freaking reading this shit all day and researching and connecting the dots. So that's how I make my investments. I'm not making my investments off the media. I'm making my investments off what I think is going to happen. And then I'm responsible for it. If, it. if XRP flops or one of my cryptos flop, then I took responsibility for it. But I did the research, okay? So this is a list of, uh, list of outreach par uh, participants to inform the work of this report, the staff and agencies held discussions with stakeholders listed below stakeholders while the staff considered input received the agencies do not endorse any particular project viewpoint or product or service but these are the people that they're communicating with the government is communicating with to find out how they should run the game okay Let's take a look here. Circle. We all know what circle is, right? Coinbase, 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 Coinbase. Think about that, Warriors. Brian Brooks had the legal counsel of Coinbase, came to the OCC, federally chartered banks, can now hold cryptocurrency. He bounces out, right? You got Tether, who had a lawsuit. They're what? They're suing Tether, and then they put him in the freaking outreach group. You got Square, you got Stripe, you got Kraken, one of my favorite cryptocurrency exchanges. Um, not a uh, not a, a promotion or whatever. Uh, you got Visa. Who else do we got here? Now, this is what I want to show you. Trade associations. You got Bank Pub, uh, Policy Institute, Blockchain Association. So this is one of my favorite things to go down these rabbit holes. Now, we all know I've shown you the Blockchain Association. If you go to the members of the Blockchain Association, the members are uh, X Labs, Abe, Anchor Digital, Finance US. Interesting. That's where Brian Brooks went to, but he already left. And we got our favorite down here. You're going to see Ripple. You're going to see Consensus, Digital Currency Group, which we know is connected to the DC or the DCG is the, the uh, crypto mafia, right? We got Grayscale. You got Ledger, Kraken. We got Ripple, Solana, Stellar, Uniswap. So these are all the people who are part of the Blockchain Association. Now, I don't know if you can just buy a membership here, but these are the people that they're meeting with. These are the people that they're meeting with for the reports on stable coins. The president's working group report on stable coins. So president, or excuse me, Gary Gunther's people are meeting with, okay, meeting with, this is their report. They're meeting with members of the blockchain association. They're all connected warriors, okay? There's our team. This is their board of directors, okay? So now this is the blockchain association members, and you could probably pay to be a member, right? Or invited to be a member. So, you know, like I could go be a member of uh, World Economic Forum if I paid enough money. But this is the board of directors. So the board of directors are picked by the company and they make the decisions for the company when they have board of directors. The general counsel, okay, is Ripple. Stu Alderada, how do you pronounce that? Okay, you got Uniswap, you got Protocol Labs, you got, uh, is that Stellar? That's Stellar symbol right there, right? You got um, Kraken, DCG Group, <laughs> Anchorage Warriors. They're all rubbing elbows behind the scenes. Now, why do I think Ripple is going to be the one that's going to run the stable coins or be the ledger that does? Because XRP literally is, the, I believe, the only one that can do it. That's that's my my opinion. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. They're the ones that have the relationships. There's the one that's messed with the SE, messed met with the SEC since their inception. Uh, they're the ones that are helping bring in the Howey test with the SEC lawsuit. It's all by design. Brad Garlinghouse sits with the IMF. Brad Garlinghouse sits on the cryptocurrency committee for the World Economic Forum. I mean, he's, I mean, think about this worse. Really think about this rationally, right? Should we believe the media or should we make our own decisions based on what they're doing to keep us out of cryptocurrency so we can't become the new uncommon 1%. So issuing stable coins on the XRP ledger. Uh, this is January 8, 2021. 
uh, the case for XRP Ledger. Now you're going to see, read this, and then go read the report. And do they match up? The XRP Ledger is an open source decentralized technology that provides significant benefits for banks, such as scalability, speed to cost. What was the issue they're trying to address? Scalability, speed to cost. Financial institutions using it today leverage XRPL for its ability to fully settle transactions for a fraction of a penny faster than any other major blockchain. So if you go back to the report on page five, go back and match these two together. Okay, remember what I said? Well, I'm not going to read it again, but this, this, this reason why I'm connecting the dots is these, this paragraph solves exactly the problems that they're trying to solve, right? So issuing stable coins, financial institutions can use issued currencies to issue stable coins on XRP ledger using the functionality and the issue simply needs to set up an issuing account, check this out, and choose the configuration options desired for a particular stablecoin. Issued currencies make this process very straightforward, stable, highly secure, and significantly lower business risk. What was one of the problems in go up, uh, page five on the stablecoin uh, PWD? Expensive. Clunky. It, okay, they don't know how to set up XRP, boom, they're up and running. So by taking the following steps, they can issue stable coins via issued currencies. They just connect the issuing bank with XRP Ledger, create a wallet, and submit the resulting creation transaction for XRLP to enable stable coin issuing account management, configure the stable coin setting according to the bank's requirements. Uh, like the previous step, issuing a stable coin is done through a simple on-ledger transaction that creates a stable coin as the issuing bank receives the deposits back to them. Done. Done, Warriors. It, it, I'm telling you, I, I, it's in my belief system. Like I said, don't believe a word I say. This is just, this is the only thing we can do is continue to go down the rabbit hole. But I'll tell you what, Warriors, it's here. I mean, the freight train is here. We've been talking about this for years now and it's here. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's not bullshit anymore. It's not some wacko, long-haired hippie dude. It's not, you know, the bearable bull, you know, going out there and putting stuff out. There's not Kevin Cage putting stuff out there and just, you know, now everything they're saying, I got to give them respect. They've been in the game a lot longer than I have. You know, even BitBoy Crypto, you know, talking about all this stuff. Like all of us have been talking about this for a long time. Digital asset investor, blockchain backer, all of us have been talking about this for a long time. Crypto area, I could go on and on and on. But it's like, it's real now. This shit is real. It's here, Warriors. So you have a choice. You can get on the freight train and go for the ride of your life. Or you can get ran over by it. But the fact is every single person has to get on this train at some point. The difference is you're either going to be in first class or sitting in coach, baby. Warriors! Ah, let's get your shit together. Let's go.